not easy. It's dangerous. It hasn't been done before. But these are the sorts of things that capture people's imaginations. Let's talk about the future of space exploration. Welcome to the bridge. Here, take a seat. This is the seat I want to be in. That's the seat. Everybody, this is Glenn Smith. He's the CEO of Mauser Electronics. Wow, it's awesome, isn't it? This it's, is, uh, it's this pretty is quite cool. a place. <laughs> I never expected to be here in my lifetime, uh, maybe when I reincarnated and came back in a few centuries, but now being here, it's fantastic. I know. I, every time I come here, I, I just have to smile because it's such a, an overwhelming experience. So let's talk about Mauser. Okay. Do you think Mauser will ever sell parts, distribute parts on the surface of the moon? Oh, I don't have any doubt about it. Uh, you know, it fits our model perfectly. I mean, you're gonna need small quantities and you're gonna need them immediately. And that's what we do the best. So there, there's nobody else better suited for that environment than we are. And you know what, I, I can imagine that if you have a colony on the surface of Mars, you're gonna need parts that are cutting edge. You can't be using old parts. Uh, you're, you're absolutely right. I mean, you're gonna need the technologies that may be invented while you're there. So that's gonna be quite interesting. Uh, you're gonna have to replace something that was designed maybe 10 years ago with something that is new, uh, that functions better based on the new conditions that you actually just discovered that nobody knew about. So I think that uh, we're, we're really suited for for uh, being the guy that can do that. And we hear about the newest products from all the suppliers, Intel, TI, uh, Freescale, NXP, all those guys are telling us about their new technologies, new sensors, new microcontrollers, everything new. So uh, nobody knows about it before we do. So yeah, it, it, there's really nobody else that can do it. <laughs> <laughs> How about Mars? You gonna go, you gonna distribute on Mars as well? Well, uh, boy, I think uh, Mars is going to be challenging. We're not going to be able to quite get it there overnight. Uh, it's going to take a little bit longer. There are, there are certain bounds to uh, physical transportation. But there, there are, but I think 3D printing is going to be part of the environment in the future. When you need a mechanical part, you're going to have to print one. Uh, components, uh, we'll see how components get printed in the future. Uh, but uh, I think there's some challenges there, but I think there's some basic components that could be printed. Beyond that, it's going to have to be delivered. So what do you think about the future of space exploration? Wow, uh, boy, the future is, uh, is really hard to predict, I think. It certainly looks nothing like uh, we expected. I mean, sitting here, uh, the future uh, of a spaceship is certainly nothing like this today. Maybe it will be someday. I think that it's pretty exciting when you have the commercialization of space, I think, is the most exciting thing to me. Uh, the government's had a hand in it uh, long enough, and it's about time to, to let people do it. They can figure out how to cut costs and do things more efficiently. Uh, governments aren't always the best at that. Uh, there's a lot of red tape and things involved, and I think, uh, I think the future of space commercialization is really uh, what makes me excited, because I know that that's going to be when it's affordable-ish, yeah. sort of affordable, yeah. to get into space, uh, certainly more than it is today. I think the great thing about the government is being able to get all of the research required and figure out the basic technologies to get you into space and then private corporations can figure out how to make it more efficient. That's right. I, I think that's exactly right. I agree with you completely and I think that's where we're at and that's the exciting piece I think. Of, it makes it a reality for people. Now, when you were a kid, did you watch the uh, space launches on TV and moon landing? And oh yeah, every one of them. That was the most exciting thing. Uh, I still uh, think about uh, Neil Armstrong on the moon. I still can't. I, I still can remember everything that I saw, and I, you know, the emotion that went through uh, my mind then, uh, and just seeing the. You know, all of the space launches, uh, you know, there was something that I just always had to watch as a kid. Yeah. All right, last question. Okay. Star Trek or Star Wars? Oh boy, that's an impossible question to answer. Uh, you know, for me, Star Trek came first. That was in the 60s. 
And I was a kid and oh my gosh, I could not believe what I saw and what was happening every week in my TV, uh, in my living room. We only had one little TV. Uh, and then Star Wars was the first time I saw space in a movie theater. Uh, and that was unbelievable. So I can't really choose between the two of them. I have to have both. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm a household where, you know, I've worked on both, so I can, I can definitely find uh, a space for both of them. I, I understand that. I completely agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> However, it is pretty cool being here. Oh, yeah. I mean, I've never been on the set of Star Wars, so uh, you have, but I haven't. I have, yes. So uh, for me, this is, this, so right now, this is the best. <laughs> Well, Glenn, do you want to see some more of the ship? Are you kidding me? Of course. That's <laughs> why right. I'm here. I'd also like to thank our sponsors who helped make this episode possible. Microsemi, Vichet, and Phoenix Contact. 